Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. As I understand, I screwed it up and I'll have to respect uh, kills and shadows talents in ti that I gave her in Titan because they are solely for weapon damage. And when we check it here, she currently does 12 to 18 plus 4 plus 13 for unarmed damage. So it's for ranging from 29 to 45, if I, my math is correct. Well, if I gave her our best two-handed weapon, she deals from 32 to 38, so this is completely useless for her. On it. That's what I wanted to tell you, oh, by the way, Lantry. Lantry. Does your spell cooldown? Where is your... Yeah, could be. We can use this one. Save, please. And let's see. While using thrown weapons, Skrittle has accelerated the rate of Lantry's attack for a short time, and that could be great. We're not using a stealth at all. We have to boost Lantry's thrown weapons. I w okay. Attack mention as a significant armor penetrate to his thrown weapons attacks. Yes. <laughs> and uh, next time I'll give him better healing. I got it. Interesting. Oh, that's why he had control life instead of healing wisps. Give me a moment. I need to replace his skill. Yeah. Or add him a new one. We could do that. Um. Control life skill. Won't this count as control life? Schedule of life. Healing wisps. Restoring touch. Ooh, vital body. A plus four percent health every three seconds for forty-five seconds. Only I Ebb has enough lore to use that. Oh yeah, so just healing, I got simply it. healing is control life, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. As you command. Once again, she's behind. Jump. The battle, yes. Get them. No, sorry. Mm. No, don't go anywhere. Shall we? Oh, uh, Lantry, I told you to go anywhere. Yes, nothing. This one for. Learn something. Come on, you guys. Oh, got it. Anything? Yep. Interesting. It truly really looks like there should be another room here. Like, I can see the flames over here. Just how in the sweet hells are we supposed to get there? And also over here. We are back here.
there was one that we couldn't get right somewhere here. Come on, guys. Here? I heard something moving, but I don't know what it was. And I once again forgot to give Landry the skill for deciphering those. Actually, I don't think we can give him the skill right now. No, it's not here. No, you definitely do not like anything other than blue. Uh, maybe you. Why did you send me back here? the closest one. Okay, never mind. Let's go back to the main chamber, maybe. We have three, right? So I think it should be enough. Okay, but right now we are in a maze, apparently. May not put anything. No, I think all that I act sorry, all that could be activated here are activated. So, like this. I'm sorry for that. That we are running back and forth right now, but I am lost, apparently. And I'm trying to find a way back. You guys really... Oh, right. You can go back. Mm, I think you could. But as you are running, I'll just look around. Maybe I'll figure something out. I'm really curious about this place here. This should bring us back to the main chamber. It did. Great. So, do you like green? You don't. You only accept blue. For now. Still not responding. Okay, it's not responding to any keystones from these old walls. Like it's strictly said from these old walls. So maybe we need to bring something from a different one. But that would mean we have to go into different old walls as well. Uh, 
no, you only, like, you only accept the yellow for now. And I will save because I don't want to run around anymore than necessary. Come on, Lantry, I believe in you. No. What? No, it was four days ago, right? Eight? That's absurd. Arguing with a perceived interlocutor or perhaps herself, the old sage mutters with her attention, jumping from left hand to right as she banters. Then we should retrace our steps. As you approach, the sage turns toward you, her face a calm and tranquil smile. Oh, darling, having trouble sleeping too? It really is you. At first I didn't want to believe, but then eyes wide with surprise, Lantry ambles forward, seeming uncertain of what he's experiencing. That, that voice! Lexime looks around, her cool nails darting in every direction but Lantry's. Mel, what happened to you? How long has it been? Your youth, where did it go? You're supposed to outlive me, not the other way around. No, not Mel. Lantry's eyes fall to the ground, his face awash in defeat. It's me, Lantry. Don't you remember? Think back to the citadel. Study nights. That time we found those berries. <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> Cleaning his throat, Lantry steps in close to Lexine and places his hand on her hip and gently kisses her forehead. Certainly that must spark something. He steps back, trembling, though she seems unmoved by the experience. The sage wraps her temple with a pain smile. <laughs> Sorry, my mind feels all fog, no lightning. It's all in here. Just tired of being tired. All I need is a little sleep. A little shut eye and it will all make sense. Let Lantry talk to her. Let's see. It's me, Lantry. He steps forward and reaches his hand out to touch Lexine. Oh, oh, it is you! The old woman's face slackens, her eyes blinks as tears begin to form around her eyes. I thought you were good. She grabs his hand and presses it to her cheek. A delusion. I, I have so many these days and many of them are you. I thought you were dead. When the fate binder said a missive came in from Sage L, I didn't believe it was you. I didn't want to tease myself with the hope. How did you escape? Who was with you? I have so many questions, but but I really need to know how we get you out of here, how we make you better. But perhaps it would be better where I did. <laughs> I, I feel... Don't say such a thing. Be glad you... Listen to me. I haven't slept in weeks. I can tell flavors of food. Even salt has no taste. And it's worse than that. Worse than that. I can't walk my sigils. Not that one. She quickly darts her hands in a flurry of hand signs, her finger positions and wrist walk showing decades of rehearsed motion. <laughs> I've signed these spells a thousand times, but no, now it's all gone. I, I have found out I had a will only after it's tried out. Your magic. All of it is gone? Lantry's shoulders slump and he sh shakes his head with a sigh. But, but you are a phantom. I never would have mastered half my expressions without your guidance. But it's all gone. Maybe you just need some rest. Maybe that would restore order in your mind. Enough tears have been shed over my missing talents. Please, let's speak no more of what was lost. I'm Edna. 
I believe you contacted me regarding a legal matter. Legal matters? If you're asking about laws, you... Wait, that sounds familiar. Holding me to thought, Lixim shakes her head with a little twitch. Did I? Efna? Efna? Oh, oh, oh my, I had given up hope and almost forgotten I had ever sent word. A look of recollection spreads across her face and Lixim examines you head to toe. Thank Kairos you found me. Apologies, you should meet me now. But my mind is a fleeting shadow of what it once was. Fatebinder. My offer is a simple one. I will submit to your justice and confess to every crime of my school. In exchange, I ask that you preserve my writings. I have seen centuries of war burn away in hours. Please, let me save something, some small sliver. I will purchase it with my life. If I were to help, what exactly would you want of me? I understand your question. If these were truly offensive scripts that railed against Kairos, I would understand you being unwilling to assist in the preservation of such a slander. I've read what I can of Kairos's laws, and I know that much of what we write speaks of how the tears is was free of Kairos's grip. I know such histories are to be put to the torch. But I contend these writings will only bring glory to Kairos. Our histories show Sorry. Our histories show the tearsmen growing in Hebrews, unable to see the doom of Kairos to the north. These are not heresies, they are studies in the foolishness of seeing oneself as equal to or greater than Kairos. These laws have a purpose. Children might read such things, feel that rebellion against Kairos is war undead and probable, and in doing so, harm themselves and others. The chronicles with Kim Dita, a society that existed in the shadow of Kairos and ultimately fell after a long lull of complacent living. I contend that such a history speaks of Kairos's inevitably and the folly of the tearsmen. So what is it you want from me? Swear by Kairos's name that you will gather and preserve my chronicles to the best of your ability. Do that, and I care not what you do with me. If our works are protected, you will grant a measure of immortality to me and the other chroniclers. If my life can purchase that, I will happily pay that price. Explain exactly what you want of me before I make any promises. My request is that you gather and safeguard the coin coal fragment I've stashed here in the old walls. Once gathered, you do all you, that you can to make sure the texts are spared from destruction. I will help you. But I can't swear on Kairos' name. I do not take such things lightly. Those loyal to Kairos take such oaths quite seriously. Am I not mistaken? I must have your assurance that the task will be done. So be it. I swear by Kairos to gather and preserve your chronicles. You are so good to fate binder. Lexin bows deeply, dipping forward, and her legs begin to stumble. Here, take this. The sage thrusts a crumpled parchment into your hands. Notes on where I left the remaining texts. My hate writing was difficult to parse even when I had my mind intact. <laughs> it's gotten worse. I've used an old chronicle trick to conceal the stashes as ordinary rubble. 
The illusions will fade if another chronicle nears. She points to Lantry. Yours is an older specimen, but he'll suffice. Uh, older specimen? But I popularized the rebel in plain sight trick. The nerve of this woman. If you need a hand translating, ask Lantry. He always had a knack for deciphering my scroll. I have some other questions. Can I help you? Well, apparently. No, not can help. My insides have been fooled by magic and I am denied the comfort of sleep. You would think having every hour of day to spend would allow for such profit. But alas, I seem to step in and out of the present and I'm never fully at rest. I have fallen victim to a sleepless syndrome. A resident beast woman mystic healed me after a near fatal fall. While I lived, her healing took its toll in the days and weeks to come. The physical injuries vanished, but the restlessness took its place. And nothing has been the same. Okay, but I am here to find Rifton. No! Nain squeaks out of her with a gasp of her body becomes rigid, her face livid with focus. Mel sent you. Then he's still alive, and the wound has not gone to entirely to ruin just yet. Having experienced the sleepless touch of Riftown, I'm certain she uses her fledgling magic to heal. She just didn't know, nor could have known, the cost of her actions. Riftown is an anom anomaly. She has the power of this woman mystic, but she was improperly trained. She claimed being here in these old walls strengthened her connection with the arcane, but I suspect it is the case of too much power in unskilled hands. I spotted Rifton examining the cravings down here. Maybe you've seen them. They look like primitive murals. My operating hypothesis is that this place has strengthened her magic. Just as a spell is cast with moon force near a spire, I think this place makes Rift House laden spark of mysticism into something substantial. So what can be done to help her? Above all, Rift Town values the people of the wound, and so her grief over harming them, even accidentally, is overwhelming. I think she needs insight into her own magic prowess and reassurance that she can prevent making others sick with her magic. If she weren't afraid of her own powers, she might realize the wound needs her. But she's stubborn with muscles, so even helping her come to terms with her magic might not be enough. Beast women respect strength. And she may just need someone to knock cells in her. But ideally, better to help her come to terms with these powers of her, if possible. Where is she? She is still herself in a nearby chamber. Many sleepers have come down here, some to worship, some with hostile intent. Most looking for answers, but I think we sleepless only serve to remind Rifton of what went done. Tell me about these murals. There's a few of them down here. Each of them appear to be very old and made by claw and rock, not hand and paintbrush. I've spotted Rifton examining them, and while that proves only correlation, not causation, it does make me wonder. It's a bit of a leap, I realize, but the way you and I have scrolls and letters, perhaps beastmen can write symbols and share magic with each other, is ways beyond our ken. She shrugs, a sad smile stretching across her face. It is the best hypothesis I have. I mean, was there the alternative? She learned her magic from listening to the bane? That's a horrifying thought. What do you know about Riftalon's magic? Not enough. She didn't mention being a mystic when we first got acquainted here in Bastion's wound, Buster's wound. Which was odd, beast women handled both of such things. Rifton must fear of constant challengers. 
Why hide such power? We must have been here for a span or two when someone got hurt and Wave Talon calmly offered to help. She placed her hand on someone's broken leg and gave everyone amazement. It just meant it. I was amazed, but I had seen beast women mistakes before, and so foolishly, I just didn't think to ask more questions. She used this healing trick several more times before we realized the long term harm of her curative magic. For me, it's odd that she signed her magic so quickly. I couldn't even see what outcome she was channeling. No, she ever tell me. I will seek her out. Excellent. Take this keystone. It should grant you access to the room to the east where I lost saw her. Speak with her. Show her patience. And see if you can glean something from these old murals. Reef Talon was a great shepherd to the bastard's wound. If she could be cured of her agony, she could once again be a great leader of our enclave. Okay, but this is where I'm gonna end this part. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive. And see you soon. Bye.